we decided to spend the summer traveling along the Pacific side of South America. To explore new and wild places. New cultures and new cities. We brought a camera along to interview people we interacted with along the way, asking them about tourism and the environment and how the two are related. For this project, we decided to highlight a few unique locations in Peru. One special stop along the way was on the arid northern coast of Peru. We stayed with an organization called Waves for Development, where they showed us the magic of this old fishing village. Next stop was in the heart of the Cordillera Blanca. Finally, we made it to the Salkantai Trek to reach Machu Picchu. Our first question was about general thoughts on tourism. Traveling is a great thing and the ability to see the world and see all these beautiful things everywhere for so cheap is a marvel that's new to our generation. I love traveling and everything but after a while it's kind of the same conversations and you, you meet people but you get to know places but not that well. You know? Like you don't really dig into it that much. And here now I have the feeling I'm really like becoming part of the community, you see all the progress they're going through and like how it builds up their confidence and everything. It's like makes yeah, it makes me definitely happy and it's a it's a really great thing to do. Sí, no solo para Guaraz Turismo, es un muy buen venido para nosotros. Es danos vida a toda generación del del pueblo, ¿no? When there's also more people, there's more money. And so for places that are like Peru that used to have crashing economies, mm -hmm. to now have like a consistent income from a beautiful place like this, it makes it, it like, it's hard to say that that's a bad thing. Sometimes we always say like tourists is good, it's good for community, but sometimes come with bad things, you know, like drugs and parties. And like you see, Lobitos is quiet. It's a, and people, fishermen, want that, no? So we have to talk about this stuff, no? So, so it's like, if we want bars, where have to be the bars, no? Until what time? Business and stuff. How they can, yeah, become part of this whole progress and not be left, left aside, kind of, because there's the one part growing and growing and tourism and, yeah people making money out of it and the other part like the local people who actually make this place so beautiful are uh, kind of being left on the side. Next we asked about the biggest local environmental problem. Ahorita el problema del más grande del medio ambiente que veo es el cambio climático, ¿no? 
la desgraciación es muy fuerte. Este año es más notorio que otros años porque no hubo mucha acumulación de nieve ni hielo. En las épocas de lluvia, ¿no? mucho. Algunos ya desaparecieron, algunos han, están ya por terminar, algunos que eran muy grandes están cayendo, mucha caída constante. Sí, está preocupante la situación ahorita. Muchas basuras que lo dejan sinceramente aquí los turistas. Pero antes no se hacía esto, pues. Y se piensa que es debido a esto, pues, porque delfines a veces se encontraban en la playa ballenas varadas. Then we asked about if tourism was affecting their surrounding area. The environmental impacts of tourism, I guess, is something that's extremely important and relevant, especially in Peru. Claro, muchos. Hay, hay muchas personas, hay veces que dejan basuras. Yo creo que es la contaminación a nivel global que está marcando todo esto. This is, this is land that's been sacred for millennia. And to not recognize that and not like also not to recognize that like you have the privilege of being a part of it rather than just the fact that you're a part of it what tourism really is, is go be in somebody else's place and you know and you're you're in someone else's space and you have to <coughs> respect that if you you wouldn't go into someone that you don't in someone's home that you don't know and like put your feet up on their dining room table. So why would you throw your garbage in like their <laughs> national park? It is an environmental problem because it's pollution, but I think it, more than anything, it does come down to a social problem. We inquired about possible solutions and actions happening in each community. Ahora cuidamos mucho más la naturaleza y siempre en cuando nuestro basura arribamos hasta Guarasquicho, ¿no? todo lo que es plástico y orgánica siempre para los animales que puede ser como donkeys o como burros. We asked Kike to explain more about what the nonprofit Waves for Development does. In the beginning, they, they just want to share the the happiness of surfing, ¿no? and the happiness to be in the ocean and take wave. ¿no? Then they saw opportunity to to connect with the people. Step by step, we they start to teach English to to connect with the with the foreigner people who come to, to visit Lobitos and to be part of this school, surf school program. We support that uh, activities with, uh, with volunteers, volunteers who come to Lobitos and invest in, in the programs. No? Then we saw the, 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 the idea to start teaching uh, environment because it's so important here. So we have also free classes of, uh, of environment. I, we, we believe like any, any knowledge can be a possibility to, to change no? the, the, the reality. They have a great reality. They, people in Lobitos live in a beautiful place, but always there is something more. And uh, we try to be part of that chain. No? Plastic Desert is another project happening in Lobitos, where locals are gathering used plastic bags and preparing them to be reused as handbags and other accessories. People who work in Plastic Desert, they know what they do. They know every single plastic bag is not in the ocean. No, they know that and, and I'm very happy for that. And the other important thing is they can make money for, with that. No? And uh, you will see they are so happy because they can, they can work at home, no? doing something creative and also like uh, healthy. No? Verdaderamente no, no sabíamos esto que está ahora, ¿no? Sí. Y es por eso que verdaderamente también nos hemos dedicado a esto también para proteger todo eso. Pues. Finally, we asked each person what they would recommend to the world in order to live more sustainably. If there is more of a culture of responsible tourism, where we think about where we are and how we're impacting other people and how we're impacting the people that are here all the time, 
And I really think that that's how we can move forward. Uno, reciclar. Cuidar más el medio ambiente, cuidar la contaminación en los glaciares, ¿no? Creo que sería un incentivo, ¿no? Pero eso depende de los gobiernos centrales que nos puedan brindar eso. Siempre y cuando de las basuras no, no dejar y recoger y poner en el... Hay lugares del Parque Nacional. Be aware of what you're doing. I think that's it. Like, be aware what consequences everything you have kind of have for others. So, if, you, if it's like a decision what you want to buy, clothing, flight ticket, or either maybe take the train or bus. If you, if this could, small things, I think, can make differences. I always try to give the most I can, you know? No matter uh, the situation, but sometimes it's not possible, but we try, no? with, with happiness. But I really think that what we need if we're going to really like create a sustainable world where we have, like people have clean water and people have like their sacred lands maintained and the beauty of nature maintained the way that we want it to look, there needs to be a collective shift in consciousness.